Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to another episode of the podcast for Without Spot or Blemish Ministry. So glad you're here today. Today, I want to talk to you about sort of a branch off of my last message where I talked about women and children and how they needed to be obedient to the Father as the head of the household. But there's times when you can't be obedient when the Father asks you to sin. And you know, the same thing goes on in the workplace where you need to do work for your bosses unto the Lord and uh, they ask you to sin and you can't do that. And I'm going to give some anecdotes and some examples of this right after we pray. Father God, I just praise you and thank you for this opportunity to come before you and to minister from your word. I'm asking you to just give me the words to speak to your children, to give them confirmation of the things that you've already been sharing with them by your spirit. I praise you and thank you for that in Jesus' mighty name. And right now I bind up rebuke and come against any demonic spirits that would affect me in this broadcast or that would affect the listener. I come against any spirits from trying to give me words to say that are not from the Father or to twist this message in the ears of the listener. I bind that up and rebuke it and come against it in the mighty name of Jesus. Command all those demons to leave both me and the listener in Jesus' mighty name. All right, so I was thinking a lot about this topic as I ministered to somebody. Um, We're just talking about what are some of the examples of how a father who is supposed to be an authority over the children and the the mother and the family, according to Ephesians and Colossians and uh, Timothy and all the other places we cited in the last scripture. When would the mother and the wife not be, uh, not submit to the commands of the father? And, you know, I could come up with so many examples. It's any time that they ask you to sin. But I got a good example from somebody I prayed with. And she was saying that when she married her husband, they agreed that secular music was not something they wanted to listen to because they recognized the satanic influence of the music they grew up on. And suddenly, during the marriage, he decides he wants to uh, partake of that music again, and he starts playing it in the car and everywhere else. And um, she's just struggling with it. Why, why are you doing this? And she protests. And in my view, she had every right not to submit to that, to to be in a marriage that's supposed to be peacefully led by a husband that's in line with the Word of God and with Jesus Christ, she's supposed to be able to safely believe that she's not going to be subjected to satanic music. And it wasn't even music, the, the band that she told me it was, wasn't even one that's any question that it wasn't satanically inspired. And she even told him, you know, that he was starting to change as a person as he listened to this music. And I've done several podcasts on music and its effects on us so it's no surprise to me that she saw that change in him and yet he was still doing it and in my view she did not need to submit herself to that that's sin that's sin and you might say well that one's sort of on the fence it's just music okay well I don't believe that and but maybe you do but there are many other examples of ways that a husband could ask a woman to sin. Let's say that the woman comes into truth about Christmas and doesn't want to celebrate it, but the husband insists that she decorate the house as she had done in years prior and that she do all these things and cook a a ham on on Christmas, uh, Christmas Day and do all these things to honor this pagan ritual. In my view, no, don't submit. If you're... If it were me and I were a woman and the husband was trying to force that, I would say, and I actually have said this before, um, well, I'll just leave the house during during that month and you can decorate. I'm not going to be in a house with idols in it. And I don't think that a woman that, that takes on that same uh, stance and posture is wrong to not submit to that. That's not wrong. That's sin. And um, Or... If he insists that she observe the Sabbath on Sunday when she's come to the truth about it being on Saturday, I just, that's wrong. She cannot be forced to go to church and be called anti-submissive if she won't go on Sunday. Any more than the man I testified about that I saw his YouTube video where he said his wife said he could have his eight children back as one of the, um, uh, one of the caveats was that he had to honor the Sabbath on Sunday again. He couldn't do it. And because of the court systems and the way it was, he he would if he wanted to be with her and be with his kids, he had to submit to her will, which is obviously counter to the Bible and wrong. But I'm saying that if a if a man asked a woman to do the same thing, that's just not right. That's not right. Oops. Sorry about that. That's not right. So let's see. 
there's so many other examples. Um, you know, a lot of men, husbands will be, uh, smokers, drinkers, they'll do weed, they'll, they'll drink heavily, they'll do, um, pharmacia through, um, prescribed drugs or street drugs. And all of these guys are going to are going to be narcissists. Their minds are going to be turned upside down. Up is going to be down. Black is going to be white. They're going to do the opposite of the right thing every time. They're going to be little children. And those men are going to ask you to do all kinds of things that aren't going to jive with God's word and uh, to sin. And in my view, you do not have to be obedient. And if you are with someone and a woman that's with a man like that, for him to... Um, take mind-altering drugs. I personally would leave a person that did that. First of all, they're illegal. And even if they're prescribed and they're taking them to the point where they're going cuckoo, they're overtaking and breaking the law that way. I would not submit myself to a man that was a drunk. No more than I'd want to be with a woman as a man that's drinking all the time and turning everything on its head and falsely accusing and gaslighting me all the time. It's impossible for a drug and alcohol addict to not gaslight you. And you are going to be living in an upside down world. So if I was a woman, I would not submit that myself to that. I would try to uh, either go back and stay with my parents if that were possible or find a roommate or do whatever I could to um, get away from that person and even not expose my children to it too. I would understand that's a good enough, that's a more than good enough reason to uh, leave a man. So um, let's see. Now I kind of want to change to workplace uh, submission. You know, the Bible says that when you work for a boss, you should work as unto the Lord due to the best of your ability. And, uh, you know, we do that. But there are times where bosses are going to ask you to send too. I remember I had a job where uh, when I took the job, I said, look, I can work. I always tell people this. I can work every day except Friday night at sundown to Saturday night at sundown. I cannot work on Saturdays. And I make it very clear. I don't get religious with them. I don't say it's a religious belief. I just say, I can't do it. I will work Sunday through Friday. I'll give you six days, but I can't work that day. And in this particular job, I was the only one that worked on Sunday. And the guy said, and, and the other guys didn't work Saturdays either. And the, and the boss said to me, I need you to work Saturday. I need you to be a full weekend guy for me. And I said, look, I told you at the beginning, I can't do that. I won't do that. And he, he implied that he would have to hire someone else. And I said, look, hire somebody else. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even sue him. You know, I wouldn't even make a big deal about it. I would have just left because I've seen God provide enough that I don't need to trust in man to be my provision. God is my provision. So, and my job was sort of based on how much I could sell anyway. I knew if I could sell what I was doing there, I could sell it anywhere. So I didn't need, I didn't need that job. You know, I trust God. I didn't need so much that I would have to sin. And so for me, not for me working on the Sabbath, which is the seventh day, according to the fourth commandment and everywhere else in the scripture, it didn't change until the time of Constantine and the church at Rome around 300 AD. They changed it. God never changed it. And I know the truth about it. And I'm not going to uh, work on the Sabbath. And no, I'm not Seventh-day Adventist. That's a Masonic cult. You can Google that for yourself and find out about that. But I do honor the Sabbath on Saturday. So it was that simple. I was not going to to um, do it. And you know what? He never fired me. Because I was, I mean, I'm not trying to brag, but I did the job to the best of my ability. And I had a lot of good clients uh, through that company. And he didn't fire me. You know? But I stood my ground. And I didn't let him bully me. He, he bullied me pretty hard about it. I didn't let him bully me into doing something that was against God's word. And so whether it's a, a, a wife who should be in submission to her husband or a, um, a person at work that should be in submission to the, to the requests of your boss, God is not asking you to sin and to, to do things that are sin in obedience to your spouse or your, or your, or your boss. Now, if it's unsinful and they ask you to do it, like if your husband came home and said, uh, would you mind uh, washing those dishes or whatever? And um, you're, you're like, heck no, you can't make me do anything. Or if I had been at work and he asked me to do something that was within my the realm of what I'm supposed to do, then you know what? I needed to do it. And um, if I didn't, God would not have been happy with me, you know? 
we do the best we can to in our position in our to know our role to fulfill our role and uh, we try to be pleasing unto those people that are above us in the hierarchy you know even as adults if you go back and live with your parents for whatever reason you need to be honoring them and respecting them to some degree to great to great degree if you're living with them under their roof or if you're staying in someone's house they own it let's say you're renting a room they have their rules you can't give them rules they have their rules and we need to do the best we can to um, submit to their rules but if anybody asks us to sin we need to not not obey we need to not submit and women i know that a lot of times women get triggered by a video that i did uh this last video that i did that had to do with submission to your husbands there are plenty of reasons to not submit and many of you have been subjected to them if you're a uh, listener and a watcher of the videos i put up then definitely you've and you've experienced that kind of abuse it's best for you to get away from a man like that than to stay and uh be gaslighted all the time and and uh, submit to cruelty. You know, Peter wrote that you, as long as you're not afraid with any amazement to be in submission to your husband. And so there's an implied um, level of fear you could uh, go through that would lead you to leave. You know what I'm saying? Especially if they're sleeping around on you and cheating and all that. And a lot of you are being gaslighted and they're denying cheating and yet they still are. I mean, I totally get all that. I'm not discounting any of that when I make a video like the last one I made. But I'm just trying to... Um, you got, it's a, there's a fine line and there's a line of demarcation between de being defiant because you need to, to not submit to a request that is sin and just being defiant 100% of the time and just being... Uh, I want to use the B word, but I won't. Being a B just to be a B. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we don't want to fall into that snare of the devil where we're just acting angry all the time um, and, and getting becoming better ourselves. So we need to forgive. And if you live in an abusive situation, you need to get your extract yourself from it and not subject yourself to it if they're asking you to sin all the time. God's separating the sheep from the goats right now. That's why there's so many divorces in large part, especially between people that are really walking with him in a marriage and the other one isn't. The one that isn't right now is they're really beginning to amp up the persecution and the abuse. And many of us need to leave off those situations. It's just that simple. And so, but during that abuse, we have to find a way to center ourselves in Christ so that we don't become the thing we hate. And uh, that's all I have to say about that. Let's close with a prayer. Father God, I praise you and thank you for this message. And I thank you for just ministering unto us from your word and your truths and helping us to walk with you each and every day and to be, first of all, submitted to you and then to the hierarchies that you put in place and help us to be obedient to you and all things and to do the best we can for our bosses and our spouses and our parents, whoever's over us um, that we are supposed to be subjected to. Let us obey them in the things where we should, but when they ask us to sin, like Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego were asked to sin in the book of Daniel, they wouldn't do it. And three of them were subjected to a fiery furnace and Daniel was subjected to the lion's den and, and they did not submit when they are asked to sin. Help us to be those people that obey you first and foremost. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thanks for listening. If you like the music if, that we have, you can download it for free at the Reverb Nation link below. If you want more videos, just subscribe and go to our channel without spot or blemish ministry if you want to see our blog spot without spot or blemish dot blog, blog spot dot com and if you like to donate everything's free that we do including ministry calls um but if you'd like to donate you can do so at the paypal link below or go to paypal and our email there is without spot at gmail.com and you can uh also email us at that email with prayer requests praise reports and the like we'd love to hear from you thanks for watching this episode See you next time.